in the words of Alexis Mateo. What's it called? Probably should have looked that up before we started filming, huh? Dragonian coffee? Hey guys, it's Saturday. Welcome back to the den. So this week on the den, we're doing that trendy coffee drink, Dargonian coffee. Draconian coffee? Draconian? That, that sounds a little more accurate. <laughs> Every time I hear the name Draconian coffee, I think of like Game of Thrones, like dragon coffee. Oh. I thought that for our own health and well-being, we should make a Trump cocktail. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, if you've got your uh, your bleach and your Lysol, I know it's a small one, it's all I could find. We're going to make Trump cocktails. Not very smart. No. Don't actually do that. So obviously we're not making a Trump cocktail. Right. Clearly. A uh, Lysol cocktail, a germ-free cocktail. Yeah. I'm sure there are a million names people have come up with by Corona teeny. I shouldn't laugh at that. That's terrible. Yeah. But yeah, so we're making that uh, that trendy coffee drink, cold foam frothy draconian draconian coffee thing. We went out and bought Nabob instant coffee. So everybody just does it from the jar with the big granulated ones. And yeah, those are a lot more readily available. Those jars of like instant coffee. Yeah. Those are a lot more readily available in the states than those. I saw these on sale and I thought, ooh, so we can have some variety. So there's a dark blend. And then there's a Colombian coffee, so, you know, just give it a little bit more flavor. It's probably a good, like, 80-ish degrees in this kitchen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a horrible kitchen. It's either too hot or too cold. Yeah, there's, there's never no, a fine balance. There's no happy medium. <laughs> We'd have to open a window, and then you would hear everything outside. Yeah, because that's fun. So we've gone ahead and pre-boiled the kettle. Now we've figured out that it's three packs for two tablespoons. So if you haven't made this before, or if you haven't seen it being made before, uh, it's two tablespoons of instant coffee powder, two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Uh, you can use brown sugar, white granulated sugar. I'm sure you could probably also use if you have like stevia in the raw or... You can, but it doesn't quite get the same consistency, the foam. Mm. Like it, it'll be like a looser foam. It's like using the wrong type of cream when making right. cream. Regular sugar is vegan, right? Anyway, <laughs> yes, we'll make a nice vegan coffee and pour it on top of a nice glass of cow milk. Mm. So now one thing that I did when we made these the other day is you actually are supposed to use two tablespoons of boiling water. I used two tablespoons of boiling water. Uh, actually, it was a little less than two. It was like one and a half. And then the other half was actually uh, almond flavoring just to mm. give it an extra little bit of flavor to it. Otherwise, it's just like a plain mocha and yeah. I like I like like an almond mocha. Or yeah, you're essentially like making like a like an iced coffee with this recipe because it, it essentially yeah it comes out tasting just basically like something that you would buy at Starbucks. Right, and it's funny before this thing started trending, I was thinking I could go for an ice cap from Tim Hortons, an ice cappuccino. Ken and I, since everything's been going down, we have stopped 100% eating fast food. We don't order coffee. Yeah. We don't do anything. We make everything at home. As, mu as much as I want to support people who still have to work right now, I don't want to take the chance of getting COVID because somebody was asymptomatic and showed up for work that day. Part of it too is I've worked in restaurants for the better part of 15 plus years and I've seen so many bad habits from people and I just don't want to take the chance. Like I understand right now they're taking extra precautions and everything, but it's not worth the risk to me. So. Moving right along. Yeah. So we've got our instant coffee and we've got our sugar. Yep. So because we're making a double batch, I'm using six of these. And um, like I said before, we figured out that three equals two tablespoons. So uh, it's not just an arbitrary amount. We are actually measuring them. And this coffee is called Midnight City. Yeah, they had one called some uh, gas station or something that sounds appealing yeah no it was it tastes like it was coffee that had been sitting on the burner for two hours it was just not appealing i think it was called gas town yeah. <laughs> wow because when i think of i really want that beverage i think of gas <laughs> thank you baby 
All right, now we're gonna go ahead and add the two tablespoons of sugar and uh, just a touch extra because it is dark roast, so. And a little bit of extra sweeten Are would help. Are you the almond extract this time? Yes, please. Freshly boiled kettle. Just over one and a half. It's ready. And just a little bit. Not, not enough to be overpowering, but just enough to give it a little bit of flavor. Now, if you've made this before, you know the next step is a long process. If you haven't made it yet, um, what you want to do is grab a hand mixer and then you literally mix it for the next 10 minutes. Because right now we have this lovely looking, I don't know if you can even see that, lovely looking slurry. Mm -hmm. And he's going to whip it up into something that resembles whipped cream. As Debo said, whip it good. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> so when I don't know. When the problem comes along, you, you must, must copyright it. strike. <laughs> so I don't even know if our mics are going to be audible through this, but it smells wonderful of almond. Yeah, it really does smell really strong, like almond and like very sweet sort of smell. And the longer you go with it, the uh, lighter it, go it gets. So it'll start off as a really dark color. Yeah, it's like almost black. It's so dark brown right now. And by the time you're done, it'll be like a nice golden brown color. So I'm just setting five minutes on my timer. And yeah. <laughs> so while this is mixing, and hopefully you guys can hear us okay, uh, last night Ken and I watched the new HBO series, We're Here, starring Eureka, Bobby yeah. Drag Queen, and Shangela. Amazing, uh, absolutely yeah, incredible. It was uh, actually really good. I, I enjoyed the uh, the storyline because there were a couple different storylines that all kind of merged into this one thing that they came into town to do. Yeah. So when I first heard about it, I thought it was like a two Wong Fu type deal where they're just like bringing um, drag culture to small town America. But no, it's like. If you haven't seen it, spoilers, um, in the first episode, there's a mother who chose her religion over her daughter when her daughter came out. Yeah. And it... She it's, has a really touching heart-to-heart -heart with Eureka O'Hara. It's, it's incredible. The entire time, not going to lie, I was fighting back tears. And a few times, Ken looks over and I'm like... <laughs> 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 like lip quivering. And yeah. It was so good. And it's funny because there's that other Netflix documentary, Circus of Books, mm. that's all about that, uh, the bookstore that was at the forefront of gay rights for yeah. so many years. And we were going to watch that and I thought, I don't want to watch anything that's really dramatic that's going to make me feel upset or like, I want something lighthearted. And I saw that and I thought, let's watch that. That's going to be campy as hell and fun. And it, it wasn't campy like I thought it was going to be. It was campy, but... I like I thought it was going to be, and it was so good. It's definitely worth it. This has already gone from a dark, deep brown to more of like a milk chocolate yeah. brown. Now, the important thing is you can see around the edges, it's still dark. You have to make sure that you're scraping that down. Spatula City, we sell spatulas, <laughs> and that's all. So, If you can name what movie that's from, let us know in the comments our below. Younger viewers will probably, <laughs> yeah, our younger viewers will probably have a very difficult time trying to figure out what that is referencing but that's okay if you have not seen that movie <laughs> you should watch it it's really good so i did a single batch the first time and the first time it was like not a whole lot in the bottom so it's hard to stir maybe you want to choose like a smaller bowl or something but yeah this one because we're doing a double batch you can actually see it in the bottom and if you've ever made whipped cream by hand, you know that when it's getting near ready, it forms peaks. Well, it's really similar with this foam, so... I think a smaller bowl would have been more helpful. Probably. Yeah, in high... You know what they say, high size 2020. Well, well should have yeah. used a smaller bowl, but that's all right. This will work. So also, if you missed it, uh, Thursday was the series finale of Will and Grace. The yes. second series finale. Yeah. And for those of us who are old enough to remember... Clearly, the first season finale, or series finale, that was in 2006. Yeah. I feel like the way they ended it this time was a lot more cohesive to actual ending of storylines. Oh, yeah. 
the first finale makes me cry every time, and it's the one scene. So in the original finale, hold on, there's three seconds left. So in the original finale, there's a touching scene with Jack and Karen, and they're singing Unforgettable. Yeah. And just them doing that duet every time, even just thinking about it right now. Yeah. Choking me up. <laughs> well, that and the fact that he and I do that whole Jackie, yum, <laughs> all the time. Okay, so it's now mixed. That was five minutes. And as you can see, it's got a nice golden chocolate color. Yeah. It will still move. It'll have like a little bit of movement to it when you yeah, tip it. Yeah, but it's a lot more viscous than it was when but we it's, first started. But it's thick. It's yeah. like a tar. Now, if you want, you can whip this up even more. If you have a beater that's really high torque, it'll work so much better. Yeah. You'll get a lot more air and into it. It'll be fluffier. Also, we kind of use this big bowl. Giant bowl. Because yeah. <laughs> we were doing the video. But in real life, especially if you're only making it for yourself, use a much smaller bowl. We actually do have smaller bowls, but they're in the fridge right now with leftovers in them. So, <laughs> Because we've been cooking at home. <laughs> He's been cooking at home. I burn things two glasses and if you're not from canada you have no idea what this is yeah that's milk in a bag mm -hmm. yeah it comes in like a bag like a great big bag that has four of these size bags yeah in if it. i pull it those out are, i'm gonna dump milk yeah everywhere. those are one liter bags so basically it's four liters which is just over a gallon uh, a u.s gallon but it's convenient because not only can you have that there but you can put most of it in the freezer because it's in a bag that's sealed and then just get it out as you need it. We haven't bought milk since before everything started. Yeah, because we had two cartons of um, almond milk that we were trying to get through. And we thought, okay, so we've done the almond milk thing for a while. Let's go back to regular milk and see how it fares out. Because I don't think almond milk freezes all that well. No. It, I mean, it kind of does, it, but well, it doesn't be, quite go back. It, because of the way it's made, it gets texture. grainy and starts to separate. Yeah. So, so we decided to go with that. So... Now what you want to do is try and scoop up as much of this as possible and evenly distribute it amongst the two glasses. And it should float right on top. We all float down here. So like I said, if you have a higher torque hand mixer, it will get a lot fluffier and yeah. you'll get a lot thicker. It, it'll look like it's supposed to. You'll um, get, um, basically, well, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, you'll get it to look like the consistency of whipped cream. It'll be very light and very airy. Right. And I mean, if you don't have a super high torque mixer, you can. Potentially, we could have gotten ours a lot frothier and headier we would have made it in the blender we would have had to stand here for 15 minutes minimum because i made it the other day and i literally mixed it for 15 minutes and i got it, it was nice and frothy and i'm thinking like okay i just wanted to see how it turned out it turned out all right um it, it's more the flavor that i was going for than anything else because i don't know about you but i've been craving iced coffee all right so last year niagara um, Niagara passed a law that you can no longer have plastic straws. So we went out and invested in metal straws. So, yeah. Well, and it's good to have those anyhow, because I, I see buying plastic straws as such a waste of money anyway, because you mm -hmm. use it for like a second and then you throw it out. Whereas these we paid, I think 10 or $15 for, and we've had them for months and months and months and used them many, many times. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes with a convenient little bag, so you can bring them with you mm -hmm. anywhere and there's some bent ones and some straight ones. So obviously we don't use the straight ones because we're not straight. <laughs> so anyway, this is what you'll be left with. Just a, a very layered. If it's foamier, you'll notice a very uh, like stark contrast between the white milk and the, the actual uh, coffee powder. Yeah. But you just mix it up and take a nice big swig. Now, we were going to try the one with the matcha tea powder and all that, but I don't know if the grocery stores near you are like the grocery stores near us, but shit is cleared out. Yeah. Like, I have been looking to find yeast 
for the last month and a half. Yeah, Can't every, find everybody's it. out of yeast. Everybody's out of yeast. I've been wanting yeast so I can make cinnamon rolls. And the other day I just went out and bought a frozen puck of uh, pizza dough. Added the sugar, the spice, the raisins. That's right, I love raisins in my cinnamon rolls. So yeah, so that is the, did we figure out what it was called? Draconian coffee? <laughs> Draconian, <laughs> This is a Draconian coffee. <laughs> Whatever the coffee's called. So yeah, so this is a uh, good little treat, good little snack. Yeah, give it a nice mix before you drink it because it does tend to separate itself fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. What it reminds me of is uh, a few years ago I worked for Tim Hortons and I used to make this thing that's called an iced mocha latte or a nice chocolate latte. And it's basically chocolate milk, couple pumps of uh, chocolate, some raspberry flavor shots, and then like seven or eight espresso shots because I'm a caffeine. And yeah, so I would drink about four of those through a shift. And by the time I was done, I would literally be vibrating, bouncing out the door like a bunny rabbit. But they were so, so good. Really good. I had to put a little bit more milk in mine because that powder, because it didn't fluff up as much. Yeah. It was very, very strong. Yeah, it's also a dark roast too. Well, there's that, yeah. But can you taste the almond some? Sure. Not really. No. <laughs> Woo! That dark roast is strong. Yeah. We made it with the Colombian last time. The, the Colombian was strong, but it not quite like this. This is, whew. Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah. I needed more milk. Yeah. So, he needs some if milk. You really, he needs some milk. really, really like dark roast coffee, definitely try this. If you're not a fan of a really strong mocha flavor, I'd definitely go with something um, a bit lighter. Yeah, I, if you're going to go with this and you're one of those people who like Starbucks because they're coffee beverages that don't really taste like coffee, I would go with a light roast instant coffee if you can find it. Yeah. For those of us who do enjoy like a robust coffee flavor, these were fine. It was a little strong at first. So we just wanted to do something, you know, kind of kind of simple, kind of silly for, you know, yeah. to kind of, kind of raise us up out of the yeah. pit of everything that's been going on. So... Um, if there's something else that's viral, like a trend or a dance or, uh, maybe not a dance because neither one of us can dance, <laughs> just if there's something <laughs> viral that you would want to see us try out, or even if it's like Derek, Greg, and Steve, or Ed, or Jake, if you want to see one of the Den Boys try out one of the viral trends, let us know in the comments. We're always looking for something silly to do to take our mind off of things. I think that is going to do it for us this week. Yes. Yes, I got a new uh, gaming monitor that I've been playing around with some graphics and Final Cut Pro and some other things. So I'm going to go play with that and we will see you guys next week. Ah. Bye.